Welcome to my ranking of my personal top 20 roller coasters. I'm a German roller coaster enthusiast with 62 credits and my home parks are Movie Park Germany and Phantasialand. Since I've only ridden 62 roller coasters, there are some family coasters on here and my list might not be as big as yours. So far I had the opportunity to visit every big theme park in Germany, but sadly I didn't get the chance to ride Fly, Dynamite, El Toro and Tiles Überkopf. But finally, let's start with the video. These are my top 20 roller coasters that I have ridden. Number 20. Big Loop at Heide Park. Most people think this ride is rough and uncomfortable, but I actually like this ride. Yes, the transition into the final break run is really abruptly, but if you keep your head forward, this ride is really fun. The best place to sit is definitely the back, because you get some nice airtime going down the drop and the fake mid course break run. The loops in the back are also very fun, because you slowly rise up and then you get pulled down. And the setting of this ride is very beautiful. Number 19. Nessie at Hansa Park. This is an old Schwarzkopf looper from 1980, but this ride is still butter smooth. The loop on this coaster is very intense. Not as intense as a loop on the bigger Schwarzkopf coasters, but still very powerful. But the best thing about this coaster is the ejector airtime you get in the last rows. I rode this ride between the middle and the back, but I still got some nice floater down the drop and the mid course. The only downside of this ride are the brakes. Most Schwarzkopf coasters use this loud braking system. And Nessie has the same brakes, but indoors. So be sure to cover your ears. Number 18. Blue Fire Mega Coaster at Europa Park. This was Mug Rides first ever big launch coaster. Even though Mug Rides has built Helix and Copper at Strike, Blue Fire isn't that great. The ride starts off with a very cool dark red section and then you get launched. But this is a launch from Mug Rides. Need I say more? The first element is... Yeah. You don't get any airtime, you don't get any positive g-forces. The loop. You don't get any hang time, you don't get any positive g-forces. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, Blue Fire isn't a bad coaster, but in my opinion the ride is a little boring, except for one element. The last hardline roll is great and it's my favorite moment on the coaster. You get some very nice hang time and the roll is super fun. Number 17. Wunja's Fear at Phantasialand. Wunja's Fear is the better one of two more spinning coasters at Phantasialand. The ride starts off with an elevator lift and then with a cool drop you can experience backwards. The rest of the ride is filled with very cool surprises and for a family coaster this ride is really intense. This ride might be hard to marathon because the block brakes are very strong but all in all this ride is fantastic. Number 16. Wodan Timber Coaster at Europa Park. This is one of the coasters that I can't remember very well because I rode it a long time ago. What I still remember is that the ride has a fantastic, and I mean fantastic queue line and I also like the drop. All in all the ride was a little short but fast paced and super fun. Vorden is also very beautiful and the trains are very comfortable. Number 15. Silver Star at Europa Park. This ride is tied for the tallest and fastest coaster in Germany with another coaster you will later see on this list. I remember this ride as tall and fast and long and fun. But my problem with this ride was that you don't really get any airtime on the hills, except for the drop of the mid-course break one. In the back you get some nice projector airtime, but on the other hills you get maybe some mild floater, but nothing special. And a good friend of mine also said that the ride is very shaky at the first valley. All in all, not a bad ride, don't get me wrong, but the ride lacks in airtime and I love airtime. So that's the main reason the ride isn't higher on this list. Number 14. Fun Helsing's Factory at Movie Park Germany. This well-themed ride is only 26 foot tall and 22 miles per hour fast, so you might ask yourself, why is this coaster on the list? Well. This ride is completely indoors and it feels a lot faster than it actually is. In some places the ride is very well themed, in other places you're riding in pitch black darkness and you don't see anything coming. In the middle of the ride you drive through a few unbanked curves, like you would find on Wild Mouse. This is also my favorite moment on the ride, because you enter the curves with a lot of speed and you get thrown to the side. The rest of the ride consists of helixes and twisted hills with floater airtime and this ride has also a very cool soundtrack. Number 13. Black Mamba at Phantasialand. 
The best seat on this coaster is definitely the front. But I've ridden the ride only once in the back and dozen times in the middle. My back row ride was very whippy and super fun, but my rides in the middle were still great. The ride is very intense and focuses on positive g-forces. In nearly every element on the ride you get some strong positive g-forces, except for the zero g roll. But the zero g roll is not so good, because you're not really weightlessness. You experience more like 0.5 g's. I mean the roll is cool but nothing too crazy and this ride could also be more varied. But still I love this coaster and don't skip this ride if you're at Fantasialand. Number 12. Colorado Adventure also at Fantasialand. This is my favorite family coaster that I've ridden and for a good reason. The ride experience is very long and the ride features three lift hills and a huge tunnel. If you're sitting near the front or in the middle the ride is nothing special, just a basic family coaster. But if you're sitting on the back you get pulled from side to side and up and down. And the ride experience is very chaotic and out of control. You even get some airtime going down steep drops and in the tunnel you can't see anything. And the whole ride gets better. This is one of those coasters when you get off you say I want to go again. The only little downside is that the ride isn't as great themed as some of the other coasters in the park. But you're having so much fun on this ride, it doesn't matter. Number 11. Flug der Dämonen at Heidepark. This is Germany's only wing coaster and a great ride. But let's start with the bad things. I absolutely hate those spin and west restraints. They are so tight on your body and you are not free while riding. Now to the good things about the ride. The ride is well themed and the queue line too. The ride has a wing over drop which I really enjoy on the back. The atom hill on this ride is good but not great thanks to the west restraints. The rest of the layout is fun but nothing too special. This ride is also very intense. The ride has many moments with strong g-forces and it's another ride which is really hard to marathon. Number 10. Desert Race at Heidepark. Desert Race is Germany's only hydraulic launch coaster and the launch is very forceful. It's my second favorite launch that I've experienced and every time the launch packs a punch. After this insane launch you go in three back-to-back -back twisted atom hills and every hill provides strong flowjector airtime. Not ejector airtime but still strong flowjector. After those three hills the ride is basically over. You have this last hill which gives you some floater but not much and then your ride is over. The biggest con is the length of the ride. This ride is very short. Another thing people always talk about is the theming of this ride. It's just not there. It doesn't bother me much but many people think they should theme this ride better. This ride has also a slightly rattle which is not great but it doesn't bother me much too. Number 9. Sky Scream at Holiday Park. Most people know this place because of another coaster, which is much higher on this list. But this park has also a premierized Skyrocket too. Sky Scream is at the bottom of the non-inverting loop very intense and the drop before the non-inverting loop is also very whippy and intense. The Heartland Roll is fun, the launches are okay and you get some surprisingly strong airtime going up the vertical spike. My biggest problem with Sky Scream is the train. The train is so tight and the lippers have those awful shin guards. But Skyscream makes up for it with the queue line. I love Skyscream's queue line. The whole queue line is filled with artificial fog and there are many scare effects. Number 8. Krake at Heide Park. This is one of the smallest BM dive coasters in the world. And you might ask yourself, why I rank a dive coaster so high? Well, let me explain. This was my first dive coaster and I absolutely love this drop. You have those B&M over the shoulder restraints, which are not great, but not bad either. And with them you get some very nice airtime. The drop is the best in the back and here's a pro tip. The two middle seats in every row are XXL seats for bigger people. If you sit in one of them and you get some room, the drop will be legendary. And on one ride I had so much room I actually thought I had to hold on. But the fall was great. But this ride is very short too, even shorter than Desert Race. After the great drop you go into the Simmelman, which gives you some nice floater airtime and the airtime hill gives you some floater airtime too. But after that the ride is over. I also like the theming and when I'm at Heide Park I can't get enough of this drop. Number 7. Star Trek Operation Enterprise at Movie Park Germany. This is another Magrides launch coaster and the launches on this coaster are very bad too. The ride is also sadly very shaky but the layout is brilliant. 
you have this backwards twisted vertical spike which gives you some awesome weightlessness. You also have this nice top hat and if you're sitting in the back you get some mad ejector airtime going down the top hat. And then you have three great inversions. The hardline roll gives you some great hang time and the 0G roll gives you some great weightlessness. This is a very good 0G roll. Sorry Black Mamba. Oh and this ride is beautiful. Just look at this piece of art. Number 6. Carajo at Erlebnispark Tripstrill. This is the second coaster on this list I can't remember very well. Here is what I can remember. The ride is decently themed and the queue line is nice. The seats are very comfortable and you are very free while riding with just a leper. And Carajo features a very cool surprise. If you don't know what the surprise is, I'm putting a timestamp on your screen now where you can skip the surprise. But if you are interested in knowing what Carajo does, here we go. After the station you go into a right hand turn which leads into a heartland roll in complete darkness. This heartland roll is very fun and you get some awesome hang time. After a mini drop you go down into the right's launch. This launch is also very forceful. After a nice top hat you go into the right's three inversions and they are all very fun. The giant corkscrew gives some awesome weightlessness, the dive loop gives some awesome whip and the last corkscrew is also very fun. All in all this is a very underrated and cool ride. Number 5. Colossus Kampf der Giganten at Heidepark. And for all American coaster enthusiasts, you say Heidepark. Not Heidi Park, Heidepark. This was the first ever Intermin prefab, and the ride operated from 2001 to 2016 as Colossus. After a complete retracking, the ride opened back as Colossus Kampf der Giganten with new trains, new track, and a giant monster. The monster is filled with artificial fog, and when you enter the monster, it's really cool. The drop is in no way bad, but not great either. It's super fun getting pulled down in the back, but I don't know how to describe it. The drop isn't shaped like El Toro's first drop. It's more like Goliath's first drop. You know what I mean? But anyway. The drop is still awesome, the first two camelbacks give some nice flow jackter airtime, the speed hill gives some floater airtime, the helix is pointless and the last three bunny hops again give some nice flow jackter airtime. Not as strong as on the first two camelbacks but still solid. All in all this coaster is super fun and for all American enthusiasts I haven't had the opportunity to ride El Toro but from what I've heard the airtime on El Toro is much stronger. Number 4. Fluch von Novgorod at Hansa Park. This very cool Gerstlauer Eurofighter gets often overlooked in the shadow of another coaster on this list in the same park. But don't overlook Fluch von Novgorod. The ride has one of the quickest accelerations on the launch on any coaster in the world. And let me say, this launch is powerful. It's my favorite launch that I've experienced. After this crazy launch you fly into a massive airtime hill, which provides strong ejector airtime. The ride has also a very cool hardline roll with great hang time, two epic pre-shows and a beyond vertical drop in complete darkness. This drop is awesome and after the drop you rise up, still in complete darkness, into a 90 degree bank turn. And at this point I always lose my orientation. You get some great weightlessness and after another big drop you go into the ride's final break run. This coaster has just a great overall package. Number 3. Der Schwur des Kernern at the same park. Where do I even start? In my opinion the ride is a little overrated and not as good as some people say. But don't get me wrong, I love this ride. This coaster has one of my all time favorite drops. The drop is twisted and you get pulled down 220 foot at a 90 degree angle. And let me say, this drop is incredible. The ride has also 4 other great ejector at some moment and after the stangle dive you get some crazy ladder ridge forces out of this world. This ride has also very cool surprises. And again I'm putting a timestamp on your screen if you don't want to be spoiled. But here we go. The ride has a backwards free fall on the lift. The free fall is not as intense as a free fall tower, but still a great experience. The second surprise is again another hardline roll in complete darkness, but this time at the end of the layout. Also, this ride has a legendary soundtrack. My only complaint with this ride is the roughness. The whole second half is very shaky, but my real problem are the first two rallies and they are sadly very rough. Sadly I also never got put in the front which is the best row with the smoothest ride experience on this ride. I'm sure when I ride the front row I like this ride much more but in this year's ranking it's only number 3. Number 2 
Taron at my home park, Phantasialand. This is one of the most fun coasters that I have ridden. When you get off the ride, you want to go again. Once you ride this coaster, you're addicted. The ride starts off with a great launch, not as intense as Lancet Race or Fluch von Novgorod, but still 100 times better than a Mark launch. The ride has also an even better second launch. You enter the launch very fast and you get launched even faster. The ride is also very long and butter smooth. I've ridden Taron dozen times in the front and every time I leave this ride with a smile on my face. This ride is not as intense as some of the other coasters on this list, but the ride didn't need to. All in all, Taron is nearly perfect. Number 1. Expedition GeForce at Holiday Park. Wow. Intermin. Wow. What have you done? This ride is... There are no words to describe this ride. It's hard to believe, but I'm not overhyping this ride. This roller coaster has often been voted the best in the world, and rightly so. This ride has my all time favorite drop. In the back, you get absolutely pulled over and thrown to the side. Immediately after that, a large airtime hill follows. In the back, this hill gives some awesome ejector airtime, but in the front, it's on another level. Every single element is better in the front, except for the drop. This ride features a long and butter smooth ride experience filled with the strongest airtime moments that I've ever experienced. If you want more information on every element, I have a whole separate Expedition Divas review on my channel completely in English, so be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please drop a like and punch my subscribe button. I'm out. Peace.